Hey guys, it's now only three weeks until Richard Allen goes to trial for the murder of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. Of course, we're talking here about the Delphi case and things are hotting up. We've got two new court filings today. We've got the state's objection to defendant's motion to suppress that was filed on April the 11th. The defence wanting to suppress the confessions that Richard Allen made while in prison, while in Westville Correctional Facility. So the state has provided the defence with the statements of Richard Allen. These statements include phone calls made by Richard Allen to his wife and his mother, and statements that he made to Indiana Department of Corrections staff and inmates. The statements made to Indiana Department of Corrections staff and inmates referred to as Suicide companions consist of statements on door sheets. These door sheets are forms provided by the Indiana Department of Corrections for monitoring the behaviours and statements of Richard Allen at a frequency determined necessary by mental health personnel. The state has identified and provided the names of all suicide companions, which the state intends to call as witnesses for confessions and relevant statements against his own interest, which include 16 correctional officers, eight inmate companions and the warden, mental health personnel and Indiana State Police officers. So they're going to call every single one of them. How long is this trial meant to be lasting? Isn't it scheduled for three weeks, including jury selection? Talks about the law and about the admissibility of a confession controlled by determining from the totality of circumstances whether the confession was made voluntarily and was not induced by violence, threats or other improper influences that overcame the defendant's free will. So the defence are arguing that he was so messed up he was in a psychotic haze or something and therefore these statements weren't given of his own free will. The Fifth Amendment's privilege against self-incrimination applies to the states through the 14th Amendment when a defendant challenges the voluntariliness of a statement under the United States Constitution. The state must prove by the preponderance of evidence that the statement was voluntarily given. So they're arguing these statements were voluntarily given. The self-incrimination clause of the Fifth Amendment protects an accused only from being compelled to testify against himself and otherwise provide the state with evidence of a testimonial or communicative nature. In the order to be testimonial, an accused communication must itself explicitly or implicitly relate to a factual assertion or disclose information. Okay. Interrogation under Miranda refers not only to express questioning, but also to any words or actions on the part of police other than those normally attendant to arrest in custody, and that the police should know are reasonably likely to elicit an incriminating response from the suspect. Since police cannot be held accountable for the unseen results of their own words and actions, the definition of interrogation can extend only to words or actions on part of police officers that they should have known were reasonably likely to elicit an incriminating response. That the defendant is being held in pre-trial detention for his safety pursuant to court order, inmates of the PLUS programme and subsequently corrections officers holding facilities have been assigned to observe Richard Allen and record his behaviours, which has included documented statements by Richard Allen. OK, so we know all that. Okay, statements made by Richard Allen, which the defence seeks to suppress, are unsolicited and voluntary. The defence has alleged that physical coercion by state actors has resulted in involuntary statements by Richard Allen that should be suppressed. The defence has also alleged that the psychological coercion by state actors has resulted in involuntary statements. That the defendant has not alleged that any of these statements are a result of interrogation by law enforcement while in custody and the state would assert that Richard Allen was not being interrogated by law enforcement or any agent of the state during his pre-trial detention regarding the charges pending hearing or regarding any other criminal activity.
The defence is making a blanket argument that all statements by Richard Allen are the result of improper influences based on the defendant's mental state, without having to address each statement and its unique circumstances. The defence argument ignores the case law regarding application of their cited constitutional protection by skipping over the threshold of showing or alleging interrogation by law enforcement or their agents. The defence motion expects that that should be the court to accept that all inmates, employees and third party medical and mental health personnel are acting as agents of state, specifically law enforcement, with the purpose of illegally coercing statements from Richard Allen. Look, they are state actors. They're working for the state. I mean, apart from the inmates... Those inmates, I assume, are carefully chosen by agents of the state. Anyway, I'm not going to read any more. It's nearly the end anyway, but Francis will deny the defence's motion anyway. So let's move on to this one. This is interesting. So the state of Indiana seeks any and all employee records for Todd Click associated with his employment at Rushville Police Department. What's this all about? Well, Todd Click is one of the three guys... Todd Click working at Rushville, and then we had uh, Greg Ferency and um, Murphy. What's his first name? I can't remember his first name. But, yeah, those were the three guys who, for several years, it was like three years, investigated the Odinists. And Todd Click spoke at the recent hearing in March. So Nikki's fighting back here. While working the Delphi investigation, Carroll County Sheriff Department Detective Tony Liggett developed information that Richard Allen was involved in the murders of victim one and victim two. Just involved. <laughs> Just involved. Yeah, like involved. Right. All right. How? How was he involved? You don't know, do you? During the investigation, then, Rushville Assistant Police Chief Toddy Click. <laughs> His name's not Toddy. Participated in following up on leads and interviewing parties associated with those leads. The defence has listed Todd Click as a witness they intend to call during their case in chief to express his belief that other people were involved in this crime. The state believes that Todd Click has employee records that show a Brady Giglio violation that could call into question his credibility as a witness. So they think there's something in his employee records that will bust his credibility. Okay, well, that's interesting. I'm sure Francis will grant this, but yeah, interesting. Based on this information, the state has filed a motion for leave to obtain these records. This is badly worded. The state is requesting the employee records, mental records, so mental health records for Todd Click. No, come on now. You can't ask for his mental health records. Surely not. For his employment at Rushville. If that's what that means, then surely not. Specified in the attached subpoena and request for production of documents and records of a non-party. This request is made for the purposes of preparing for trial. The state believes that Todd Click will be a witness called by the defence to support their theory of the case. The state believes the employee records of Todd Click are relevant and would assist the state. All right, employee records are one thing, but if they want health records, then no. I don't think so. I'm just trying to see if there's anything in the rest of this. Any documents, records, notes, videos, and or writings that made up Doug Click's employment file. I mean, if he actually wrote in um, proper sentences, we might be able to understand this better. The state is requesting the employee records, mental records for Todd Click for his employment. But there's nothing in the attached subpoena about mental health records. But surely not. Health records, mental health records, surely they're protected. But then again, this is Francis, so she'll do what she wants. All right, guys, let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next video.